Hey y'all, Faye Queen Mini here with the very first episode of my uh, very, very brand new RimWorld series. I am so, so very excited to um, get started with this Let's Play. I've been planning this project for actually like a, a very long time. And I'm just glad that I am finally able to share what is quickly become um like one of my favorite games with you all so yeah so the way we start is that we're gonna go in with this brand new colony um we're gonna start with this scenario that i myself have created um it's called the high school bus bus crash yeah i, I guess that i should work on the name <laughs> Anyway, it says a group of students chosen for a special trip by their quirky teacher to see what lies on the very edge of space. While trying to, the, to avoid the gravitational pull of a wormhole, the teacher pushes the thrusters a bit too far and it's, whoa, I had some editing to do inside of this thing. Anyway, got stuck into a pull of a gravitational planet as their bus or ship is pulled towards the planet into a fiery ball of death. Everyone grabs what supplies they can and get to the escape pods as they hope for a safe landing. Sometime later, they land on this unknown rim world. So basically, this, this, uh, if you've never seen rim world before, this lays out like all the things that the, um, pawns, as the, the little people in rim world are called, it states what they will start start off with and here is at the bottom where it says map is scattered with is the things that will be essentially thrown about on the map <laughs> um this particular scenario that i started uh starts with seven people and they drive with, with and jump drop pods and yada 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 uh i'm going to do phoebe phoebe chillax on medium now just a little note I personally haven't even though I've logged so many hours into this game like I logged like almost 300 hours over the course of a few months but I still like RimWorld it's, there's a lot of games to encompass you guys it's I feel like there's so much and that's why I love it so much so I really only ever played with Phoebe so far but I, I like this game so much and even though I feel like I'm still you know only about halfway decent at playing this game I decided that I still wanted to to share it with you all anyway so I'm gonna stick with Phoebe but this time I'm gonna put it on medium even though I normally put it on uh, usually I play on builder we're gonna put it on medium I'm gonna put it on reload anytime mode just for the sake of recording purposes of if I need to like pause and save my game and come back or anything like that so that you know just in case files are lost and days are lost yada 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 anywho okay so then we choose a, a place on the map right it's gonna generate a world also in case you did not notice from what is on my storyteller board my game is modded to hell and back, okay? <laughs> I have a ridiculous amount of mods, and I love it. If you know me, you watch me play here on, on YouTube, or you watch my streams on Twitch, you know that I consider myself a mod whore. If a game can be modded, I will probably mod it and get a obscene amount of mods for the game. <laughs> Whether they be cosmetic or game changing, usually I try not to change the core game too much. I just try to like add to it while, you know, not really being very game breaking. But yeah, my game is mounted to hell. So in case you're wondering, this is why the map looks like this. This is why there are clusters of factions um, all around the map. As you all can see, there are four different factions as well as the pirate band. Who don't give a damn and spread out everywhere they see fit. We have 
I don't even really know how to pronounce these names, so I'm honestly not even about to try. So we have blue, red, yellow, and green. <laughs> Some we are, are neutral with, barely neutral with them, and one we are kind of very hostile with us. So that'll be fun. Um, so yeah, that's why they're kind of banded together and also still kind of mesh together at the same time. Normally, I, th I think that they are kind of like more widespread throughout the map. So yeah. What I tend to do as far as picking a spot is I just go in and choose, have them select a random site for me first. And I kind of go from there depending on where they landed me. Um... And again, this is because I feel like there are so many different places where we could possibly land on this map. And I don't, y'all know me, I am indecisive. I don't like choosing things. So, like, I just like, I let the game do it for me. <laughs> and I kind of adjust from there, but try not to go too far from where the original spot they placed. Okay, so here we have, it's, it's mountainous. It's desert, so it's very sparse, but... I'm thinking that, if I'm not mistaken, mountainous means that there will be, like, a lot of rock to be mined and we'll probably, like, live inside of a mountain side or something, cliff, mountain or whatever, rather than being, like, out in the open. Uh, it has a, a decent growing period of 30 out of 60 days of the year. Average disease frequency is pretty low. So, yeah, I mean, we're not too close to anybody. Although being in a mountainous area means that we we aren't we aren't that far from a road, which for whatever reasons I haven't really played with yet. <laughs> um, I'm guessing it'll it'll be all right. I, I think I'm I'm just gonna go with it. I'm I'm alone for the ride almost as much as you guys are. <laughs> okay, so here is where we choose to um modify our pawns normally i wouldn't modify them too much i would pretty much just choose from what they have given me but since i have made up a specific scenario i've also created um sort of specific background stories for each of my pawns so i'm gonna take this time here to break away and then i'll come back and show you guys what i've done and uh yeah i'll see you in a bit all right, and we are back. So, I'm going to take time to go through the list of characters and their traits and some of their, like, overall skills. Uh, just so you guys can get an idea of them before I go into the game. Just, just a smidgen. Just a smidgen. Now, remember, I don't, I don't think I said this before, but um, <laughs> you guys are actually paying attention. You will kind of see that... Um, my inspiration for this whole scenario, kind of, is uh, largely based on that of the Magic School Bus. Um, around the time I first started playing RimWorld, I was looking through the mods list and available mods on the community store or whatever, and I found one that had a picture of the Magic School Bus on it, but it wasn't exactly updated. So, I just kind of took that idea and basically made it my own. Uh, these are all basically still like my own characters and like how I envisioned it for, you know, my own gameplay, my own story. So, here we have the first one who is Wesley West. <laughs> His nickname, the one in the middle is their nickname. It's not like their middle name or anything. It's what they will mostly be called. Um... It's what they will be called over over so over Wesley he will mostly be he'll probably be called West all the time because that's just what will show up so it's Wesley Wester he is a fallen prodigy which is it says some of these um I'll just go ahead and say it some of their like childhood backstories don't exactly match but I kind of chose it also based on sort of like their um skill point modifiers so he says um, he was born on a glitter world falling into chaos. His father was killed in action. He struggled for a scholarship at Alt Mayor Academy. 
and had to prove his right to be there. A child genius, he was bullied as a charity case and couldn't make friends with the other kids. And this gives him a bunch of plus modifiers. His main skill and passion is intellect. Um, he does have anxiety from being on this trip into space. He is a body purist. He's chatty. He's neurotic and polyamorous. Um, quick note, almost all of the kids are polyamorous. There are six kids, and I think only one of them is not polyamorous. <laughs> and I think I rated almost all of them a three on the Kinsey Kinsey scale. I'm not Kinsey, Kinsey rating. I think almost all of them have like somewhere like a two or a three or something like that, which basically means that um they are all pretty much uh in my eyes I see it as kind of like vicarious because of their young age. They all a lot of them are still kind of figuring out who they are. So I didn't want to rule anything out as far as what they might like or dislike. They all can just do whatever as far as like romance goes. Next we have Lilia, um, also known as Lily Buchanan. She's an athlete. She was a professional athlete at an early age. Thanks to her skills, she was able to leave her home world and enroll in the Glitter World University of Science and Technology. Because of her demanding, demanding schedule and introverted nature, she became socially inept, which um, gave her uh, melee plus four and intellect plus three. Her main passion is construction. She has aspirations of being an architect. Um, also, melee because it's it's something that she's being strong and fighting others she also has you know a good amount of medical skill points from being able to like fix and doctor on herself when she was an athlete um she's a hard worker which increases her global work speed she's a fast walker and she's greedy which means that she likes an impressive bedroom uh, and she is 16. Wes is 14. Oh, and obviously because they're kids and they're on, on, on a field trip with a teacher who um, kind of gives them a lot of freedom. They managed to sneak alcohol on the bus. So some of the students decided to imbibe in that alcohol. She happens to be drunk, but the only difference for her being that she has a large tolerance, which is why she's not on the floor like Aaron over here. Aaron won't be able to walk when he uh, touches down. Okay, so <laughs> Lyra Rivers, she's a farmer's daughter. She grew up on her par parents' vineyard and spent her youth exploring the land and making friends with various bugs and insects. Having heard stories about all the fascinating things out there in the universe, she always dreamed of venturing out to see it for herself. She cannot hunt or she cannot steer. So some of these stories kind of evolved as I was going through the traits and whatnot. So Lyra has developed a strong passion for animals and a strong passion for crafting. She is super immune, which means she gains immunity from diseases faster. She's a hard worker and she's trustworthy. I think Lyra is probably the only one that is not a... um not polyamorous and if i'm not mistaken i think she's the one that was going to be a vegetarian as well but that's not an actual trait that's something that i kind of have to implement in the game myself and she is 15 years old aaron the one who was lying down on his ass because he can't walk <laughs> um he is Aaron Hopkins. He's 16. He used to be, he was a farmhand. He said he was born on a farm in a small colony world. Everything was taken care of by the few members of the farm, including Aaron, which helped him build independent spirit and a well-rounded character. But Aaron is a bit of a, what you would typically refer to as the stoner bad boy. He has a chemical interest, which means he will like to do, consume, um, more chemical sources like drugs and and whatnot he's abrasive which means he kind of just says whatever the fuck he feels like um he's a peacemaker though so he's just he's he's learned to be kind of chill even with all of that um his main interest is in plants 
you know, matching his chemical interests. He he would like to be one of those people that crafts and makes plants and probably do all the drugs and planting and whatnot for the colony. He's drunk. Um, he has a large smoke leaf tolerance, so his smoke leaf uh, isn't him being stoned isn't really bothering him, but him being drunk is what has him um, lying on his ass. Him being sideways like that basically means he is unable to walk. So yeah, that's what happens when you sneak alcohol on the school bus, you guys. Don't don't bring beer to the school trip. Charlotte is sixteen. Uh, she was pampered as a child, so she was born in a decadent glitter world. Char was given every expensive toy. This pampered lifestyle caused her to miss many basic life lessons. She's developed a special aversion to cooking and always ordered the staff to do the kitchen work. Mm, excuse me. She's a jealous person, so she does not like for people to have better looking things than her. She wants the most impressive bedroom. Heavy sleeper and a socialite, which means she loves to party. Um, she has dreams of becoming a doctor, but also because of her time spent as a cheerleader at school and being, you know, part of the popular rich kid crowd, she has a high social of seven. She's also tipsy, of course. Oh, and she refuses to cook. She ain't doing that shit at all. Uh, Jonah Pitts, also known as Chef, he's 15. He is the sole survivor of his tribe. He says, Chef's entire tribe was wiped out in a raid. Though he was adopted by another group, he was emotionally scarred and preferred to stay near home, cooking and tending crops. So he has an interest in cooking and medical. Uh, yeah, just because he's seen so many things and he just decided he didn't want to, he wanted to help people, help that not happen to them anymore. So he started working on his his um medical skill so he can healing hands and whatnot um he has a bleeding heart which means that he's also super emotional and loves helping people and does not like violence hence he, him incapable of being violent incapable of being violent he cannot do any shooting he cannot do any melee attacks uh he's also an insomniac and he is he has the gourmet trait, which means that he expects to have uh, high quality food, decent quality food. That's also kind of why he's going to be our chef. <laughs> uh, OK, so that's it for the students. This last one is teacher and her name is Valerie Frizzle, a.k.a. The Frizz. <laughs> hint, hint, my inspiration uh, for the show. I used to love watching the Magic School Bus when I was little. So yeah, so she's she's 30 years old. When she was small, when she was a child, her childhood backstory was that she's an amateur astronomer. That she was fascinated with astronomy. She would spend hours gazing at planets and nebula through, his, it says his, but it really means her telescope. She is credited with discovering a small comet that would years later strike a nearby moon, disrupting the mining operations there. And as her adulthood, she became a renowned professor. It says, the Frizz's boundless compassion and love of knowledge drove her to a life of teaching. She became one of the best known names in academia through the herb world bubble. Her hollow lectures were revered by all that watched and the few students she accepted into her seminar spoke widely of her kindness and patience. Okay, so Miss Frizzle, she's a bad bitch y'all. She knows all the things, her intellectual skills, 16 her social is seven she got like skills all over the place she's a, a great shooter she got all kinds of traits that i didn't even expect her to have <laughs> technically she's only supposed to have three and she has five she's beautiful she has a great memory which means that she won't lose her skills as fast as other people she's a fast learner she's trustworthy which is a good thing to have when you're stuck on a planet with kids who probably need to vent. And she's an optimist. I did put in a few passive relationships from, um, from beforehand. Apparently Aaron and Shar were lovers and Chef and Wes were ex-lovers before, you know, the trip. So that's all that. 
I didn't make any changes to the equipment that I'm bringing or anything like that. Um, so yeah, I think we just that's you know the characters and and whatnot. More things will probably pop up as we go on along as far as how I feel their stories are developing. But I just wanted to give y'all like a brief summary of that before we started because sometimes I know Rimrock it can get a little crazy and sometimes we don't get to get you know don't get to introduce the characters as much and we focus in on saving them but nobody even knows their names so yeah I'm gonna hit the start button I'm, I'm finished yes I'm finished let's go Generating map. This why does this it always takes the longest. Okay. Oh Lord. Okay, it says as you land, you look around and see that everyone has survived. The planet appears to be habitable. Time to find a way to keep living until you figure out a way home. Oh, okay, so Aaron is no longer incapable of walking. All of them, well, not all of them, I think most of them will probably have crypto sleep uh, sickness from being in their pods. Some of them are drunk and tipsy, and as y'all can see, is a lot of, they all seem very happy, though. Probably just happy that they survived. <laughs> They're probably just happy that they survived. Um, we see a bunch of stuff scattered across the map. Hold on, let me... Let me resize my mini map just a little bit. This is also mini map is a mod. I have to have my mini map. Okay. A few things scattered across. Is that what is that? Double mid. Oh my goodness. All right. So there's a ship chunk there. One of the first things that you typically do when you start Rimworld is see if there's a place for your colonists to live or to make their first home what is this an iguana is that our iguana why is she all the way down oh no this is our iguana hint hint another you know little flashback looky from um the magic school bus but this map is is largely covered in rock, so we we just gonna have to like find a place and like hunker down, probably like in here since it's kind of already walled off. That's what's looking like it's gonna be the best situation, as well as picking up some weapons for our um, pawns. So I'm gonna do that. Um, Typically, you try to do that based on who has any sort of shooting skill at all. I know Miss Frizz has some, though. Hold on, let me unpause it. Please roam around a little bit so I can see what we have here. Okay, so I'm seeing a revolver, seeing a few guns, and some, some, some batons, some melee weapons. Okay. So we're gonna have Miss Frizz pick up one of the auto pistols. Who else? Who else can shoot? Lily can kind of shoot. Uh oh. Lily can kind of shoot. Aaron can kind of shoot. I can't see Wes's. Wes can't shoot. Okay, Lily and Aaron also get a gun. Does it really matter which one? Oh wait, no, she's equipping that one. You have to equip. Wait, what is Lily gonna do? Lily's, okay, Lily, you can get the, you get the auto pistol. Aaron, you get the revolver. And everybody else can just pick up a freaking club for now, if you can. A few of them cannot pick up clubs at all, so we're going to have the other people equip them as sidearms. 
put that side arm. Can't, can't equip that one. Oh wait, I kind of, I fudged that a, a bit. Hold on. Okay, well, maybe. There we go. Boom. And our frizz light. You need one. Oh, you can't. You? No. Really, do you? Sir, I shot. Okay, well, I guess Lily doesn't get one. And we got a bunch of stuff. Oops, we got some smoke leaf joints that they smuggled into the bus, and that's why some of them are high. We got some wood that we're going to need. Uh, we got some random money, parts and stuff, medicine. Mostly what we're going to do is probably get a lot of this stuff and put it into a stockpile. Packaged uh, survival meals, basically, because they brought lunches along with them. And just a bunch of other stuff. We can see Char over here in this darn fur coat. I'm pretty sure she's probably actually very hot. Only only she would wear a fur coat, y'all. In the desert. She wearing a fur coat in the desert. But we gonna let her live her best life, though. They walking around talking to each other, right? But what I need them to do is come over here and just put, like, a regular stockpile zone. Oh, excuse me. Right up in here. Put a regular stockpile zone right in there for now. Just haul everything. I see they got helmets and whatnot. This is where we're gonna make our home. We're gonna put like doors and stuff in here and like just work from this area for right now. It's nice and isolated. It's closed off. So it'll be secure right off top. And it's actually pretty roomy. Pretty roomy to start. Oh gosh, Chef is throwing up and he's hungry. So yeah, that's also something that we're going to need to do. But before we get going on all of that, I need to set up work priorities. Now the way that I choose to do it is I choose to have it numbered and I kind of tend to get really into detail. This tells us what our pawns will be able to do and how, like what order they will do it in. So if I have it set out of one, that means this means that they will firefight before they do anything else on this list. It goes in order from left to right, and by highest prior by lowest number is the most immediate priority. So this means that chef will do firefighting before chef goes and cooks or anything like that. So I'm gonna go get this set up, and I'll see you guys in a second. Hey y'all, <laughs> so I'm back and unfortunately I was not able to record this part right after I did the first two parts, um, so yeah, but um, in between that time I did end up getting more mods as y'all can see down here at the bottom, which will kind of help, you know, I, I just said before I think that I, I like to like use a bunch of mods and most of the mods I got are, are quality of life mods and to just help streamline the process of, of you know navigating throughout the game. Um, I also set up their work priorities. Um, typically everybody has a role that is associated with you know their personalities and their traits and stuff that I outlined for you um, earlier. So those match up like um, Aaron 
is the one that's going to be doing most of the farming and chef is assigned to do the most of the cooking and then i have some people that are set up as like lower priority things the um higher the number the lower the priority for the pawn um which just means that they can do it but they won't do it as quickly like it won't be high on the list of, of on on excuse me it won't be high on their to-do list <laughs> and it also will allow me to sort of force the pawn to stop whatever they're doing and um do what i want them to do but they have to be assigned to do that sort of um chore or whatever it may be um wes is well to say wes needed treatment but he is no longer like lying down so i guess he's fine now um so one of the first things that we want to do here is get them like set up as sort of like an indoor place to sort of like sleep and whatnot um so i think is what's going to happen is probably over here in this corner because it seems to be like the biggest space at least for now this is where we're going to set up to have them like build a wall I'm gonna build a wall right in here oh god we can't, we can't god damn sand this might not actually be the best place for us to go then hold hold on hold on wait a minute forget that we, we can't build on the sand because that is salt we can't build on this sand because that's soft sand i think we can build over here okay so then over here then we'll, bu we'll build a wall on this side until I can be able to um re remove some of that um I, I guess we have a bigger space to work with so i can just like oh excuse me not build them into a box that could actually like go over well that right there and then go up there okay oh excuse me Okay, so I'm going to have them build a wall on the inside because we want to get them set up with like spots to sleep and like places to go and drop off, like to be able to like cook and stuff like that. I don't know how much wildlife this map has. Oh, we got a bunch of steel over here. They can come and collect that. Okay, I'm seeing some caraways. Oh no, that's an emo. Then some emu and some and an iguana. I'm not sure. Like, I mean, I, I can just actually check with my wildlife, but I'm not seeing too much wildlife. What are these needle roll? What do they do? Um, needle rolls are needle posts that have evolved to grow in the most arid and dry environments in the rim. Needle posts need almost no sustenance, absorbing all the energy they need from sunlight. Minimum amount of water, huge amount of sunlight or equivalent. Night won't affect them, but a solar eclipse could be fatal. Um, their life expectancy is only six, and they don't have any meat, so they wouldn't be very useful to us right now. Honestly, it looks like. Oh gosh, fucking, it's a barb slinger up there. Those things are dangerous. What is that? Sand squid. I mean, it does look weird, but it, the colors are so pretty. Just to let y'all know, most of these animals are... Oh, there are the rest of our package survival meals. Most of these animals are like um from a mod. I have a mod called Alpha Animals. And by the time that this is out, I do hope to have my list. Ooh a lot of nice soil down here to plant in but it's so far from our base but there's another smaller patch right here you might have to like kill this crab or this pebble mitt and then just like do we get anything from this um a little bit of meat it would probably be better for us oh 200 dollars for a market value are you serious wow What is the minimum handling scale is five? I don't know if we have anybody that, I think we do. I think somebody's skill is close to that. 
But in any case, we oh pick up down the alcohol. Mm-hmm. They go to beer they snuck on the bus. In any case, I'm probably going to go and quickly set up a growing zone down here and just grow a gigantic field of rice. And usually we go with rice because it takes the least amount of days to grow. Um Harvest yield is 10. It has a good harvest yield for the minimum amount of days. Where does it say that? Usually it says, usually it says it. Oh, growing time is oh, 12 days. Wait a minute now. Hold on. Okay, we might switch this over to something else. Tomatoes. Maybe it's because of the environment that I'm in. Oh, no, wait. It says three days. That was something else. Yeah, three days. My bad, y'all. <laughs> Um, three days. Three days for harvest yield of six. And there, there are better plants, but right now, um, we really want to go with something high. It gets 100% um, fertility uh, sensitivity, which is also great. It means that it won't, there will be no, that should be no reason for it. It should slow down in growing. Except for like bad places of growing like here on the ground. That is not, you know, where plants grow. It's a little hard to see over here, but you can see over here in this left-hand corner where it'll say, like, what kind of soil it is and how fertile it is. Usually you want the super dark soil, which means it's super fertile. Okay, Miss Frizz. Wes is over here cleaning everybody has a weapon though so i honestly would, would rather that they attack rather than fleeing because fleeing could get them killed faster well, unless they can't attack and apparently chef can't do violence looks like i had a couple of people that can't do violence and she's going to humanely put the um, crab out of the, the pebble mitt out of its misery. We need to set up a thumping stockpile. Probably won't be much there except a uh, um, occasional body. We really do need them to get, to get going on this rice though. We got some planted. I have a mod that changes the way the rice looks. The way most of the plants actually look in the game. So you can't. Little, little difficult to see, but it's, it's there. They're, they're working on it. Oh, they got the room built up, so we're going to go in and... Right now, I think we're just going to drop down sleeping spots so that when it is time for them to go to bed, they can. Until we um get other things built up. We need to figure out what we're going to do as far as beds and stuff going. For that, we need to be able to cut stone and whatnot so anywho for right now just go into furniture and get some sleeping five two four okay. so six seven so that's gonna be the little sleeping corner we're gonna get production going and get in a stone cutter's table. Go on and make that. Do we? We can. Boom. We can just make it out of steel because we have a lot of steel right now. I think it helps them to be more comfortable if we put like a chair down. A chair or. So, probably just gonna use a dining chair. A square dining chair takes 45. I think it's the same as the other one, isn't it? Yeah, they both take 45. Um, we would also need a place to cook and like butcher animals. Like I said, we don't have much by way of like um wildlife the butcher the needle rows don't help us 
Um, the sand squid. Oh, the sand squid actually has a lot of meat. Revenge does not harm those is two percent. Loudness is seventy percent. Um. I don't know if I should have one person like take on the sand squid by themselves. Sand squid constantly producing a sick, a sticky secretion that acts as a powerful fertilizer. Squid can be trained to properly distribute. Oh wow! <gasps> due to balance concerns, the squid will only do this if tamed. I do not want to mess up the home map. Okay. Hmm. It might actually. Have benefit us more to tame the sand squid especially considering the fact that we don't have like we, we're probably going to have to be growing most of what we need to eat we could kill these emus but we could train them tame them train them and like have them reproduce for us that seems like a better a better a better deal to me at least And their age difference are, are it's, it's kind of a big gap, but I don't know if it matters. And their life expectancy is 45, so we could keep these two for a while. See, Wes has already gone to sleep, even though he's, he just looks so happy. That's also, that's, faces are also a mod. <laughs> also, zooming in the camera this far is, is a mod. I will probably eventually stop telling you guys everything that is modded but for right now for those of you that have never seen it I'm just gonna keep pointing stuff out they haven't planted very much of that field at least not for my liking blondie became oh shoot blondie no no how hey you stay oh gosh where is blondie Blondie is all the way over here. How? And she's eating a pack of survival meal, which she probably shouldn't be doing. But you know, iguanas got to eat too. Okay, so I think that they're all going to have to like band together. I'm probably going to have to, um, boy, gather them together, draft them all so that we can get it, um, killed real quick. Lily is building. Lily and who is right there with her? Is that Wes? That's not Wes, but somebody else is. Oh no, that's just Lily. It looked like it was another person. Okay, the bar slinger is coming and it is coming fast. Oh my damn. Okay, Lily, get over here. Who else has like a ranged weapon? Everybody with a gun. I mean, I don't even mind the clubs at this point. But I I fear that they will get like here, just just come here for right now. By the time he comes out, y'all will probably be where I put y'all. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus. Nobody dies, please. Who dropped their gun already? Oh, okay. She was just mainly attacking him. Oh my goodness, I was so scared. Like, this this is the first day. Like, we just landed. Like, it's barely been one night. It's only just been 12 hours. Oh my goodness, okay. Y'all, go business as usual. Did anybody get hurt? It, it doesn't look like it. Aaron is still stoned. Aaron is still stoned. Chef is still stoned. Lily is, is not drunk anymore. And Wes is still stoned. I was going to say, I think they have some smoke leaves somewhere around here, but apparently we found it already. So, the barf slinger does give meat, right? Oh, yes. A, oh, a good, a decent amount of meat, too. Okay, could you hurry up? You're kind of like disturbing their sleep. 
Look, Shar is like the only person that's like not wearing Synthread clothes. <laughs> She like, nah, I'm not, I'm not putting that on. Who else is not sleeping? Chef. Oh, chef, chef, you sweetheart, you just still out here working. You're supposed to be asleep. Do you have like, what are your traits? Oh yeah, chef is an insomniac. Means he will probably rest, uh, work until he passes out. Which is unfortunate, especially since he does not do any sort of combat. But it looks like we are off to a decent start um, for this first day, for this um, whole series actually. I'm glad that we found some a nice decent place, a nice big place to um, hold up for now. I'll probably wall this section off just to give them a little bit more privacy here. And eventually one area, you know, the areas will sort of become different, different sort of rooms. It won't, it won't always be this way. Also, before I go, I should I should have done it at the start, but I didn't do so. I have this mod that allows me to get a render of like the progress that we are making as far as like um actually since I put rice down there, I'm going to have to go a little lower. As far as like um it basically takes a render of this little area here and will kind of like basically like snap a picture of it and I can sort of compile the images and turn it into like a gif or like a, a speed lapse video or something like that just to show our progress of building and how far we've gotten so that is going to be it for this video. I'm sorry that it is a little bit long, but that's because I just wanted, I really wanted to introduce you guys to our characters and get to know them and enjoy them as much as I do, because I do feel like, you know, this whole thing for me.